Hello everyone, here is my top 10 philosophy books list. So these are in order from uh, 10 to 1, so the last one is my favorite. So be patient if the first ones are not that interesting to you. I'm going from uh, the, my least favorite to the uh, most favorite one. But of course this is a top 10 list, so all of these 10 are really good books. I have chosen different. Um, Outers from different different kind of philosophies, there's Stoic philosophy, there's Asian or like um, Eastern philosophy as well here. So let's get started with the list. Uh, number 10 book. And there is two books first from like a newer outer. Uh, then I'm going to like more classic books. There's some classic books of course as well. But I wanted to include also uh, Ryan Holiday, Holiday's um, The Daily Stoic. I find this a really good book because it's easier to understand like than the older books. <clears throat> and this is also a very interesting book because this is not something that you just sit down to read for like hours. This is something that you read every day, one quote and one like uh, paragraph or like chapter, uh, one page. There is for every day of the year, there is like the date of the month and then there is like some kind of lesson to follow. Uh, the year is also uh, put in the four parts. Let me see if I can find the uh, contents where it says those. <coughs> First part is the discipline, discipline of perception. Then the second part, so the first three months, then the uh, next three months is the discipline of action, the discipline of will, and then the last part is, uh, oh, there's, oh yeah, it's actually four months, so three the year is put into three parts. First is the discipline of perception for four months, then the discipline of action for four months, and then four months of the discipline of will. So really like uh, Ryan Holiday's books, and that's why I included two of them in this list. And so number nine is The Obstacle is the Way. You have probably heard of this book, very great book. <coughs> this is uh, about Stoic philosophy. He teaches like, he has compiled many like lessons and stories of not only philosophers, but uh, or there's like mostly like goods from philosophers, and then there's like lessons from uh, more like modern people, how they were stoic, how they overcame like adversity and challenges. So the subtitle says the ancient art of turning adversity to advantage. This uh, is probably very helpful for most of us, as life is like full of obstacles, especially if you're striving for some some goal. There is obstacles to overcome. Number eight is a German philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche. This is a very short book, Man Alone with Himself. Every superior human being will instinctively aspire after a secret kittel, kittel, uh, where he is set free from the crowd, the many, the majority. Uh, this is uh, not necessarily that easy to understand. There are some uh, really interesting thoughts here. But, uh, I think, for, I mean, uh, Nietzsche is a little bit like a controversial author or something, but uh, there is, like, in the beginning of the book, there's like these short paragraphs, which are like uh, nice, it's very quick to read, and there's some longer stuff in the end. But uh, moving on to the next one. Next, I have a couple of Eastern philosophy books. This is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu is um, like a Chinese uh, philosopher. He was also, of course, like in the War. This is the art of war. So uh, he talks about uh, like war, and these are things that you can really apply today, still like in business. Not of course in such a brutal way than in war, but like if you have competitors, these <coughs> things help you to compete in the business world. Uh, next, uh, Lao Tzu. So we have a Sun Tzu, and then we have Lao Tzu, Tao Te Ching, also a Chinese philosopher, and. Yeah, this book is kind of hard to understand some parts. Some parts you understand and you get some pretty interesting thoughts from here. This is about like Taoism, so basically like minimalism, a little bit like and uh, not like having too many like wants and stuff like that. And so next we have now covered five books. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, fifth book is now a Stoic philosopher. Seneca, Letters from a Stoic. I have two books actually from him, not going to tell yet what the other one is, but I really like this book, uh, Letters from a Stoic. 
Uh, it's a while that I have read this last time, but this is essentially about like uh, stoic philosophy and talks about death and everything like that a lot here. And yeah, he's a Greek philosopher, Seneca. Sorry, I mean Seneca is an Italian philosopher. Yeah. Um, then Plato, The Republic, is a very known philosophy book, classic. This is much harder to understand than Seneca. And then, uh, yeah, this is, of course, like, Plato was, like, learning from Socrates, uh, who we don't know really if Socrates is, like, re it's still, like, a legend if Socrates really lived, but um, it, uh, it should be that Plato learned from him, and that's when he wrote, uh, like, this, The Republic. And then we have a Greek philosopher, Epictetus. Discourses and Selected Writings. This book, uh, again, not very easy to understand, like some parts, yeah, but like Seneca, for example, is much easier to understand than Epictetus. Uh, so I would start definitely with like books by Seneca before moving on to like Plato or Epictetus, but uh, this is uh, really a classic. Ryan Holiday, for example, goats Epictetus all the time. Uh, very like known, respected philosopher. Even Marcus Aurelius like gives credit to Epictetus in his writings. Talking about Marcus Aurelius, of course his book The Meditations is in this list. And it's not like a book that he wrote actually this book. This meditation is actually a book made of like his meditations that he wrote for, uh, for himself as the Emperor of Rome. So he's from Italy, Italian philosopher. And this is kind of like a what would I say, like a um, grim book or like a little bit like even like a little bit pessimistic. So uh, it seems like Marcus Aurelius is like just stoic and talking about like uh, how to be stoic, but there is not really like that much like solution. But uh, of course, that at that time when Marcus Aurelius lived, there was like, of course, like crazy challenges being like the emperor of Rome. and. Uh, all of that so it's it regards a lot of stoicism stoicism to uh, endure and that but yeah he's not necessarily like a very positive person but not none of the philosophers really are they are about truth they are about like philosophy and yeah this is uh, this is very in, uh, easy to understand not everything but uh, really important to read very interesting we have one more book left. I'm going to explain why I chose this to be the first one. Marcus Aurelius's book could have been also, it's very hard to say uh, which one is better, uh, but and some might say that the best writing is Marcus Aurelius's Meditations is the greatest philosophy writing or something. Um, I'm not listing these in kind of the order of like, in that kind of order. These are, these are just like in the order of like, my favorite, uh, where I have found more uh, more value or like most value, and this is a very practical book. I find Seneca on the shortness of life. Uh, life is long if you know how to use it. Uh, this is a short book. There is like three different parts in this. There's the shortness of life, and there's some like uh, some other part. I forgot what was the name. Some consolations to someone or something. Uh, and then there's some third party, a consolation to Helvia on tranquility of mind. So those are the two other ones. But the first part, the shortness of life is like, uh, makes you think about like, really how to use your time on this earth because it's going away. Uh, nobody can live forever. Everybody is going to die. So you need to recognize, or you need to realize your mortality and not live as you, if you're like immortal. And understand like things that you're like wasting time on like the title says life is long if you know how to use it everybody complains how short life is yet they waste most of their time life could be longer you could really live a long life if you really lived every day like it was your last and if you didn't waste your life pursuing some like worthless title or something only to be have it in your uh in your um a grave stone that's actually from alone man alone with himself Frederick Nietzsche 
has says that like many men leave their lives just to have uh, and Seneca also talks about that many men also many men only leave their lives to have like in the end they only are left with a biography or like some kind of uh, text to their uh, gravestone so what is that word you really need to leave your life to and also he talks about a lot how you never know when you're going to uh, die so you really need to leave now uh, you cannot like boast about your future uh, future possibilities like that you're going to achieve this and achieve that who knows you you might not have five years you might not even have one year you might not even have uh, one more week or day you it can be any moment so really important book to read and that concludes the video hope you liked it uh, if you did give it a thumbs up and also in the description are links to all of these books you don't need to go searching for them I did the work for you any of these books, if you found them, found them interesting, you can click and buy them, or maybe all of them. Uh, not doesn't take much time to read through all of these 10 books. Philosophy books generally aren't that long. So get those, and even if you want to get those books, if you want to support this channel, those are affiliate links. So if you shop your books from bookdeeperstore.com, where those links take you, then you will help this channel out a little bit as well, because bookdeeperstore.com will uh, pay me a small commission. You don't pay anything extra, just bookdeeperstore.com will re reward me for referring you to their site. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.